What is going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and in today's video I wanted to make a vlog as to how to ask a proper technical question and request help for some of your projects. So what I wanted to do is kind of give my perspective as to how to properly, you know, first of all troubleshoot your problem, kind of figure out what the problem is with your project, go through a list of steps that you can take before even requesting help and uh, at that point how to formulate your data and kind of uh, approach ap appropriately in order for the person that you're requesting help from and uh, you know it might be me it might be somebody that you know your colleague your friend co-worker or even online on stack overflow or other uh, forums but essentially how to formulate your uh, request in order to get a, a very good response from that person not only get them interested in helping you but also to give you an accurate uh, or the most accurate answer possible so without any further delay let's jump right into it Shaking. Shaking. all right so the number one and most important point is put in the effort yourself so a lot of times I get questions of type, uh, could you please help me with this project? You know, I have this project that I'm doing as part of my uh, capstone project or as part of work. And uh, my, my answer most often is, you know, like, what is the problem? What are you stuck on? What's the, you know, like, what is the error that you're seeing? And uh, a lot of times what I get as a response is, I haven't done anything. It's just a project that I'm looking to do uh, in the future, but I wanted to see if you if you were going to do the full project for me and uh, That's just you know, like that's the nicest answer that I get a lot of times It would be something like could you do this project? Uh, and please send me all of the BOM all of the CAD files as well as the software needed to run this project and of course my initial you know, like my initial thought is uh, if you haven't actually started at anything if you haven't even you know kind of started to design a system started to think as to what you will need um how can you how can you request help before putting in some of the effort yourself so my number one advice is before you ask you know whether it is forums myself anyone else any technical person actually try and get get your hands dirty try and do the project yourself see where you get stuck and at that point you know you can move on to the next step and kind of request help in a more precise way so you would ask in a uh, in a knowledgeable way the second point I wanted to make is that you should have all of the data and information available when you're requesting help and what I mean by that is if you have for example some kind of an issue in the software what does the log say what is the error that you're getting which line is it even on do you have the full copy of the code that you've actually written you know because a lot of times um, I get I get questions of uh, the genre, my program doesn't work or my the project that I followed on your video does not work. And um, what's difficult is to uh, troubleshoot by being blind. So the first question that I would always ask is, okay, what's the error? You know, what are you getting in the log? What's the software? You know, could you at least send me the piece of code so I could run it myself and kind of see where the problem is? Um, if it is electronics, you know, if your motor doesn't work and your only question is I have a motor that doesn't run What should I do? Well, of course my answer would be and uh, it's not surprising that you get told by you know Big brands is like have you plugged it in as the first kind of step to troubleshooting? Well, my, my question is gonna be have you measured the voltage? Have you taken an oscilloscope to double check, you know, if the frequency is correct? Uh, have you checked the uh, obviously voltage current, you know, make sure that everything's connected but um, you should be you should be doing those steps on your own and kind of providing that data to the person you're requesting help from because they're not they're not sitting next to you so you have to put yourself in their shoes and kind of understand that they're unable to see your problem firsthand right so your motor might be defective you might be uh, you might have a disconnect in your circuit so there's just there are just tons of issues and without seeing the actual data or the steps that you've taken to kind of gather that data it's really difficult to um to diagnose the problem and provide a proper solution because at that stage my number one 
question is, have you checked your voltages and currents, right? Like if it's an electronics problem, if it's a software, if you get an error code, have you actually looked up the code and saw like what it does? Because a lot of times, most often than not, it's not, you know, a 100% uh, bulletproof system, your compiler will kind of give you the error and it will tell you, you know, at least which line is it on and what the problem relates to. So that would be your step to troubleshooting yourself and kind of at least understanding the problem at the fundamental level. All right, so the next step would be to go further. So to go deeper into the technology. So a lot of times you get a problem, you get stuck, you get discouraged. And I, I understand that I've been there, you know, there's spent countless hours troubleshooting, whether it is electrical or software systems. So I understand the frustrations. But what you need to do before you kind of ask help from anybody else is see if you have any documentation on your particular device, on your particular, uh, you know, component, software, whatever it is. Seek help from, you know, Stack Overflow, Google, try and do some researching on your own. See if you have a help menu, you know, if you have, um, for example, Arduino has a help function and then it has an online library of tutorials. It has a lot of documentation on the forums. If it's a different software, I don't know, if you're programming Java and Eclipse, for example, you can go on the Oracle website, see, you know, like what the function is, what are the correct parameters. So kind of do some research on your own and read the documentation to see if that will help you. And also very important, like I've mentioned, Stack Overflows, resources like that, more, more often than not, someone has encountered a problem that you're encountering. So chances are, if you just type in the problem as it is, it could be as simple as, you know, like my array does not work uh, with uh, this particular parameter. You type that in and you should be uh, more often than not be able to find an answer through Stack Overflow. If it, if it is something in electronics, for example, your motor is stuck, there are steps. First of all, your data sheet will give you a lot of guidance. If it's not your data sheet, then Google is always your friend because it will tell you, okay, measure the voltage, make sure that, for example, your DC motor is getting the correct voltage. Then you can check the current if the current's actually flowing through the motor. You know, if it is, maybe the motor is mechanically bound and you need to spin it uh, to kind of force a rotation to see if it's not stuck in any way. So there's just a lot of steps that you can figure out on your own by doing some of the research. All right, and if you've gone through all of those steps and you're still stuck, which is, you know, it happens quite frequently, but by going through those steps, you've not only, you've not only troubleshot your problem, but you've gained invaluable experience in how to deal with, you know, these complex challenges. Um, so even, let's say, even if you have not solved the problem yet, there is a clear and very good way as to how you should present the problem to whoever you're asking from. And again, this could be on the forums, this could be a coworker, a colleague that you're asking or anyone, you know, like myself, if you're sending me an email about a problem that you're having. Um, so these kind of guidelines apply to any of those situations. So what you should be sending is number one, the data that you've gotten. And I've mentioned this before, but essentially, you have to put yourself in my shoes and kind of understand that I'm not sitting next to you and, and I'm not able to always reproduce the problem, right? So I might have different hardware, different software. You might be running something on a Windows. I'm running it on a Mac, Linux, different OSs. So you have to understand that the more information you provide, the more I will be able to help you and the more I'll be able to kind of research on my own, right? So if you tell me, um, I wrote this piece of code that you've uh, written in one of your tutorials and I'm getting an error on uh, line, for example, 16, you know, and that's the error code. Um, what I can do, if you haven't done that already, you know, go and research on Google, for example, what is this error code and look up or look out in the, um, in the documentation. So I can research that code and kind of have a better idea what it is. Maybe it's a different version, right? So if you watched the tutorial over two years ago, uh, the revision might not be the same. So somebody encountered that same issue and pretty much gave an answer saying that, you know, like these versions are incompatible or this function needs to be rewritten in a different manner. So very, very important, provide as much detail as possible because without detail, all I can give you is a very broad answer, right? So imagine if um, 
you come, for example, I don't know, to Geek Squad and Best Buy, and you tell them, listen, the TV that you guys installed uh, for me last week is not working. Well, what do you mean the TV is not working, right? They, they want to get more information because without that information, they're going to be pretty much telling you, okay, well, did you plug it in? Then you tell them, yes, of course, I plugged it in. They're going to ask you, well, is the image appearing? Is the image not appearing? Is, is it just not turning on at all? So all of these questions, you kind of, if you put yourself in that person's shoes, you can prepare yourself better. And when you write your, uh, you know, your question, you can already answer the questions that that person is going to ask you, right? So you sort of, you want to predict what someone who's outside of your project might ask you and uh, put as much information as possible about your project within your uh, request. And that will, I guarantee you, will maximize the chances of that person uh, actually wanting to help you, number one, and actually being able to uh, correctly answer your question. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you want to hit that like button on the video, it will help the channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do that as well. Leave me a comment down below, you know, whether you have a technical question or just want to give me some feedback about the videos. That is always appreciated. And as always, have a nice one and see you next time. Bye. Shake it.